we were talking about how to reduce the cost of uh, 3D NAND memory. That is how to reduce this dollars per gigabit number. And we can do that in two ways as we discussed in uh, one of the previous videos. Is that you can look at the numerator and the denominator of uh, this equation. And one way to optimize cost would be to essentially reduce uh, this denominator. That is, reduce the die size for each of these dies. And that would essentially lead to more of these dies being produced on the same wafer. And that would essentially reduce again your dollars per gigabit. The other way is to essentially increase the numerator of this equation. That is essentially pack more memory in the same die size. So it can be done by essentially increasing the number of layers, number of word lines you have uh, in each of these uh, dies. And it could also be increased by increasing the number of bits that each cell stores. So that's exactly you know what the flash uh, industry focused on in their first few generations of uh, 3D NAND. And uh, I'm showing here the roadmap for uh, 3D NAND memory. So the very first product on 3D NAND released uh, in 2013, it had 24 of these uh, layers, 24 cells, and it had a capacity of 128 gigabit per die. And each of these cells was storing 2 bits per cell. Now, in the next generation of uh, this uh, technology, which was introduced just a year later, they had now, instead of 24, they had 32 of these layers stacked on top of each other. Also, not just that, the each of these cells was now storing 3 bits per cell. So, if you calculate the capacity of the new chip, it would be equal to the capacity of the old chip multiplied by the number of layers in the new chip divided by number of layers in the old chip. Also now you have 3 bits per cell versus 2 bits per cell, so we need to multiply by 3 by 2 and you can see that essentially these this leads to doubling of the capacity or doubling of the memory capacity uh, that can be stored in each of these dies even though with the same number of holes this chip would essentially have 256 gigabit of memory so you have doubled the uh, amount of memory by increasing the number of layers but also by increasing the number of bits you can store per cell. Now it's possible to essentially increase the number of bits from 2 to 3 but going beyond that that is 4 bits per cell becomes very difficult because to store 4 bits per cell you need to have at least 2 to the power 4 or 16 levels that you can distinguish between your uh, highest uh, program state and the lowest array state and maintaining 16 levels is difficult so usually you know the number of bits per cell it maxes out to 3 bits per cell which is known as a triple level cell but you can essentially still have more and more memory capacity by just packing on more more number of uh, layers in each of these channel holes. So there's nothing which is stopping you from packing 48, 64, or even 96 of these uh, word lines in just one channel hole. And that was the proposition that was uh, uh, made even in the very first uh, paper of uh, 3D NAND flash memory. The authors, you know, were cognizant of this fact that this dollar per gigabit number would 
have a 1 over x dependence on the number of layers. So if I keep on increasing my number of uh, layers uh, in this uh, stack of 3D NAN, I can keep on reducing my cost. One thing that, you know, I always, uh, you know, like to say about 1 over x function is that the incremental gain that you get decreases as n increases, okay? And you can see it uh, over here in this graph that let's say uh, the way I would like to, you know, describe this is let's say you're going from point A to point B, okay? Okay. Uh, and you're going to, you have decided that you're going to speed by uh, 10 miles per hour. That's, you know, you're going to speed above the speed limit by 10 miles per hour. It makes more sense to speed 10 miles per hour if your speed limit is 25 miles per hour versus if your speed limit is uh, 70 miles per hour speeding by 10 miles per hour is not going to give you as much gain so by no means I encourage uh, speeding but the point I want to make is that this 1 over x function it has decremental returns or it you know the amount of return that you get decreases as n increases so uh, keeping that uh, in mind, let's look at, you know, some of the other things which also come into play as you increase the number of layers that you have in your 3D9 stack. So what are some of the other things, you know, that you should keep in mind while you increase the number of layers in your 3D9 stack? So... Uh, as you increase the number of layers, you know, you increase and put more and more layers, you would also need to leave some area to essentially make contacts to these different layers. So the contacts to these different word lines would be enabled by the staircase contacts that we have discussed in separate videos. And the amount of overhead area which is associated with this uh, making the staircase would as you can imagine would essentially increase if you have more stairs the other thing is that the overhead uh, area which is associated with decoding so if you have more of these uh, essentially uh, layers you would have more number of word lines and the uh, resistive and capacitive parasitic components uh, associated with these uh, word lines would be higher and now you would need more complex decoding to essentially uh, process the data from these word lines and bit lines and the amount of overhead which is results from that would also increase not to forget about the process cost which would essentially also increase because if you have more and more of these layers the process technology to both deposit these layers on top of each other uh, in a very precise matter etching a hole inside them so you can uh, fill that up with your polysilicon channel all of that is going to become more and more difficult and the process cost is going to increase so three variables that will at least you know would essentially uh, increase your complexity and your cost would be the staircase overhead the decoding overhead and also increase in the process cost so if you take again you know these things into account the picture doesn't look as rosy okay so in 3D9, now if you take all these things uh, into account, if you increase your number of layers, yes, the ideal in an ideal world where it had a 1 over n dependency on the number of layers, this uh, relative bit cost or this dollars per gigabit cost that I've been talking about would essentially keep on decreasing. But now you also have in this non-ideal world that we talked about, you have this connection circuit which is meant for the staircase, the decoders, and also you have this increasing process cost with the each additional layer. 
And if you take all those things into account, the cost is actually going up. So you have to take both of these uh, things you ha into account as you increase the number of layers. The overall characteristics might be somewhat similar to this, uh, this U-shaped curve, which hits a bottom at a certain number of layers. But if you go beyond that, then actually your relative bit cost or your dollar per gigabit number actually increases. And you can debate when does uh, this happen, but you know, uh, most people are scaling up from 32 to 48 to 64. So for sure, you know, till 64, we are on this part of the curve. But as you go beyond 96 and so on, it might happen that it might make little sense to increase the number of layers beyond 96 or so above. So again, then you have to shrink your die size. You have to shrink, you have to do again planar scaling to enable further decrease in the relative bit cost or the cost of 3D9. So hopefully you understand the different variables controlling your 3D9 cost now and you have some ideas that, you know, what are the different levers that you can play with.